welcome to JSA TV, the newsroom for telecom professionals. And JSA Radio, the voice for tech and telecom on iHeartRadio. I'm Jamie Scott Okataya. Joining me here today is my friend, Mr. Simon Lee. He's the director of Centeris, as well as the managing director of Sapiens Capital Partners. Simon, thanks for joining us. Morning, Jamie. I really love kicking off the new year speaking with you, so I really appreciate your time, Simon. Um, I see you, and as many do, as an industry thought leader, a visionary. Um, and so I love getting a sense from you, kicking off 2017, of what you see is coming in the world of technology. So what do you see as a necessary infrastructure that we need to support IoT? Well, this uh, notion of software defined is, is coming. And we've been seeing that in the communication space. And uh, certainly all of the uh, technologies around IoT have been in, under development for quite a while and they are starting to happen. So um, the standards are being set, the hardware is um, becoming available, the communication systems to support it are becoming available. And uh, there's no question that everything that frankly um, uses electricity ultimately will likely have an IP address. And uh, the result of that means that the ability, uh, the requirement, frankly, to be able to communicate and control securely um, to those devices is going to be incredibly important. So from an infrastructure standpoint, um, edge development is incredibly important. We have to be able to reach those devices. That might mean uh, Wi-Fi. It might mean new standards like uh, Alora or Sigfox uh, in order to reach everything from a home, a plant, or a connected or autonomous vehicle. All those things are, are required. But um, a couple of things that we just mentioned, security is incredibly important. Nobody needs their car hacked because that's a, a potentially life-threatening issue. Nobody wants a physical plant um, hacked in any way. And uh, people are scared of having their cameras, like we're using now, um, infiltrated by someone insidious. So. Security is incredibly important, and that will also require greater knowledge of the network, um, not just from a security standpoint, but also from a performance standpoint, because these devices need to be online at all times. And even though some of them can probably deal with a lapse or two, um, at the end of the day, there are mission critical activities, certainly for an enterprise or if we're talking about an autonomous vehicle, where maintaining that connection is, is uh, mission critical. Talking mission critical, what do you see as the trends right in the data center space as we ramp up to accommodate all this data? You know, the, some of the things that have been happening the last few years will continue. And what I mean by that is that uh, some of the big will continue to get bigger. Uh, that means that these large-scale developments for hyperscale computing uh, aren't going to turn around anytime soon. So the largest of the large uh, will continue to build uh, bigger and bigger. And uh, they, the, yet at the same time, distribution will be incredibly important. So larger campuses near me major metros uh, will, be, will likely be a continuing trend, especially where um, power is relatively inexpensive and there are high populations, as an example. Example. Ideally, you can find that intersection. But um, edge data centers are, are here. Um, there have been a number of companies that have been very successful in, in, um, in doing that as a new business model. There are incumbents uh, like the Equinixes of the world that have refocused on their edge. And the, um, even this notion of having somewhat containerized data centers even further at the edge um, are, is, will take root. It's a matter of time, and perhaps those business models haven't been worked out, but I fully anticipate that, uh, that that will continue to happen because we just need compute and resources and uh, that data closer and closer to where people are. Yeah, it's that old real estate mantra, right? Location, location, location. Uh, same, is, same is true. So putting your, your crystal glass ball um, on, the, on the display here, what do you see as the predictions for the, for the new year, for 2017 moving forward? It's interesting, you know, the beginning of the year in particular is interesting because uh, announcements come out. So recently a CES is an example. Uh, we heard uh, AT&T, you know, certainly a, a large, uh, a large uh, telecommunications company uh, announce Indigo, which is their software defined uh, effort. And there are other large carriers that are starting to um, uh, partner 
with software defined companies because they find it faster or perhaps there are additional services that they didn't develop themselves. So it's what was sort of the land of startups is starting to migrate into the land of the established. So we, I, I very much see uh, enterprises increasingly having access um, to companies that they've, they've you know, worked with, not just emerging companies anymore, but um, their established providers um, implement models which allow them a tremendous amount of flexibility um, in how they provision, purchase, and use telecom services. Um, but, uh, but that will also uh, increasingly penetrate into how uh, systems are managed and run. So uh, the cloud has been a big story the last few years. We've all kind of maybe exhaustively talked about it, but implementing these software-defined architectures into the cloud such that your compute resources, your storage resources, all the things that you need to run an enterprise are very easily, flexibly, reliably accessible. And um, that is uh, a trend that's been happening, but I think you know technology never moves in parallel everywhere. Uh, certain things advance. We had the cloud advance, and and then we had um, the communication systems that had to kind of catch up to support it. Well, that is starting to happen, and now we have IoT and other things come along, which are increasingly going to push um, sort of the technical boundaries out even further. But um, I do see IoT uh, adoption happening. I see a lot of activity in uh, in the autonomous and connected vehicle space. Uh, some of these trials that companies like Tesla have made where they run um, cars, you know, fully aut uh, autonomous from like up, you know, uh, from California to Seattle, as an example, um, are have happened already. Um, BMW has an effort that um, where they're going to deliver some percentage of, you know, autonomous vehicles through their Reach Now program. A lot of major companies, um, including our domestic car manufacturers, are spending a ton of time, effort, and energy um, into these programs. So, I don't know that we're going to see a ton of these vehicles on the road, but these tests, um, the, the, what we are going to see is that the application for cars is going to leave the test bed and start to become commercialized. So talking about driverless cars and uh, um, SDN coming at us quickly, can you tell us how are we getting there? It all seems so science fiction. And a little scary, especially in terms of security and, and how are we going to prioritize all this data for, for really critical life-threatening uh, decisions like stopping a car uh, before a crash. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a very good point. And, uh, and it was science fiction not that long ago, but um, the good news is that a lot of advancements have been made uh, more recently in things like machine learning and artificial intelligence that are really uh, helping us. And it's not just about cars. It's about how do you, in a, in a universe where there are going to be billions and billions of devices and there are um, going to be uh, many of which are going to control things that are, that are mission critical, how do we uh, set priorities. Um, how do we make sure that the key functions uh, occur? And how do we make sure that application thresholds are maintained? And it's not going to be um, human controlled. It is going to be via machine learning. So the network um, has to become more intelligent, has to become more aware. And we've been talking about this awareness for a long time, but in the past it was only a QoS discussion. Now it has to be a security discussion. Now it has to be a prioritization by application or even sub-application such that um, the machines, the cars, whatever they may be that need the data can access the data or be able to communicate effectively. So um, we're, fortunately we're seeing lots and lots of advances out of the likes of you know, IBM Watson, out of the Amazons of the world and, and Google, and we're even seeing it applied in the home. Um, as a lot of people now have these Amazon Echoes and um, the Google Home, which are fairly intelligent devices that will only learn more and more um, as they live with you. So um, that's the good news. Uh, we do see lots of, lots of advancements that are bringing science fiction into reality, and the application of these are no longer uh, something for movies. We're seeing them uh, applied in our world today. Certainly a brave new world. Thank you, my friend, for joining us here and being so gracious with your time and, and uh, predictions and insights. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in to JSA Radio and JSA TV.